It's nice to have your company today. And uh, writing in the mail this week, columnist Clover Stroud has been talking about her ability to bounce back from life's knockbacks. Now, she says a recent £11,500 bill she received for a burst pipe which flooded her kitchen made her think all I wanted to do was hide under the duvet and wait until a knight in shining armour could ride to my rescue. But I knew what it was that I truly needed and that was resilience. So, do you have resilience? Do you have the bounce back ability if you get life's knocks and um, bumps? I used to. I used to have massive bounce back ability when I used to ignore everything. <laughs> I used to seriously put my head in the stand and not, and not worry about anything and kind of just go la, 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 <laughs> like that when real problems happened. And then I, obviously you can't go through life doing that because that's really immature. Um, and I decided because I took it to the extreme, I swept everything under the carpet, I needed to address problems because that was the best way of coping with things in reality and now I can't cope with anything <laughs> <laughs> and now I mean I give you an example my nan um, has got pneumonia and she's in hospital at the moment but when she first went in we had a phone call saying that she was in intensive care and, and we, you know we really thought it was it was the end of nan for that day and and Everyone thought I'd be fine, and they kind of gave me all the information straight, like I could take it on the chin, and I completely crumbled. Well, before you would have been able to before maybe deal I would with have, that. I, before I did, I had exactly the same scenario with my grandfather, and, and I dealt with the doctors and the nurses and organised home help and everything, and was completely focused. And just just because I just got busy and didn't really focus on the, what was really happening, and it was afterwards that I sort of fell apart. But during the crisis, I, I was enormously resilient. But I can't, I'm not at all but now. I've changed a bit. Carol, I would think you're very resilient, aren't you? You seem a very well, strong person to I, me. Well, I just think that you have to be realistic about stuff. You can't bury your head in the sand. You have mm. to deal with it. You know, life is tough. And you just have to face up to things sometimes. And when something really, really terrible happens, something really, really awful, like for me, the worst thing that ever happened to me was my mum dying. Mm. And I did deal with it because... Luckily, I had some time off because this, this show finished just, just before she died. And then for the following nine months, we weren't doing anything. So I did kind of hide away and I didn't go out and I didn't really talk to anybody. And I just felt like I needed to wallow and I needed to get the grief out or the mm. worst of it. You know, it went on for about three years. But, um, I'm, you know, my sister was completely different to me. You know, she carried on working and she, you know, she just forged ahead and thought that she'd dealt with it all and she hadn't. Mm. And she did, and she couldn't cope with it and she did crumble. So, so I do don't you know, think if, if the show had been on the air then, could you have actually come to well, work? I, I could probably, you have got yeah, through the I, day? I probably could have because I did the whole time she was sick. And, you know, people said to me, look, you go into a parallel universe. You just mm. do what you have to do and you, and you do do it. It would have been difficult. I wouldn't have been able to have spoken about it. But um, you know, and I, and I still get quite upset about it mm. about it now. But um, at the time, I think I think I got over it much much quicker than my sister because I did allow mm. myself mm. to mm. to really really deal with it, think about it, and wallow, and you know, write about it as well. So I think the, the thing is, you sometimes don't know how resilient you are until you're put to the test, oh. do you? And I would no, say don't. that I'm not a great. I don't cope well in stressful situations. I, I wouldn't put myself in stre stressful situations or a stressful job. Or, uh, and yet when my dad got Alzheimer's, which was very stressful for the whole family, I became quite resilient. I, I, you know, I faced it and I got all the information and I surprised myself, actually, because mm. I thought I'd be a wreck. And it's different and levels of stress because to some people, doing a television show would, would, would be stressful. Do you know what I mean? So it's how yeah. different people perceive things. But yeah. um, I think it's... I think, I think the, what, what you said is really true, and, and obviously grief is like a completely normal emotion that you have to deal with, but sometimes life throws something else at it, like sort of like a depressive illness or something, which took away my coping instinct for, a long, you know, for, for, for quite a long time in, in, in areas that I may have coped. But I've found that looking back o over my life, which I've been in sort of quite a reflective um, mood re recently and sort of looking back, and actually surprising myself at how resilient that I had been in lots of situations because I'm somebody that doesn't cope with minor stresses like if if <laughs> pathetic really if I go home and I'm really tired and the kitchen's a mess I can burst into tears in that even though I'm not exactly the tidiest person in the world I can actually burst into tears at the fact that my kitchen's a mess um, yeah, and, and, everyone you has know, those little things that tip you over those the little edge. Things. But one, one, of my, one of my main examples is that when Louis, who's now nine, was, was born and, and he was diagnosed with Hirschsprung disease, which is a, which is a, 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 a thing where the nerve endings in the bowel 
um, where the nerve endings in the bowel don't form properly. And anyway, it was a, it was a, it was a long process. But he was seriously ill and he had two near-death experiences. But at it, 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 no point during that time did I ever really think that I was going to, lo to lose him. And it's funny looking back because if someone was telling me the story about somebody you know like as, as if somebody was telling me their story and it was me i would be going oh i wouldn't have been able to cope with that well, see, i, I been able that, to cope listening with that. to you i think but i couldn't but, cope but, but with i did that, cope but and of do, course yeah. you have to cope because mm. who else is going who else is going to cope in as well because it's such a dramatic situation you don't go there to think about the stark yeah. reality of it because it just doesn't bear thinking about yeah, so you just yeah. kind of soldier through don't you and it's really um you know as as, as i say it it has surprised me and sometimes when i read things about um about uh, Princess Diana in particular, because she suffered with, with, with mental illness, it, which, which manifested in different ways to mine, and people sort of often talk about it, critics talk about it as if that was a sign of weakness, but actually, when I look through what I came, what I came through and the fact that I did go to work and that I did look after mm. my children, dealing with it almost crippling mental illness, has actually made me think, that's actually a sign of strength rather than a sign yeah, of weakness. Yeah, and I think, you know, talking you know about I mean? it as we are now, other people, you know, realise it's something you can talk about. Well, I think you're a pretty resilient lot. It's, it's, it's interesting to think about, though, isn't but it? But I How still got stressed when I didn't have a free view box and I couldn't get my channels back. That's not good. Free. That's yeah. not good. I, I'm, I'm feeling your pain. I'm feeling your pain with that one. Well, uh, we'd like to...